Okay guys, I am back with another Thanksgiving recipe. This is my sweet potato casserole recipe. Um, we don't put marshmallows on our sweet potato casserole. I know a lot of people do that. We do a crumb topping instead, similar to what you would put on top of like an apple crisp or that kind of thing. So I'm gonna get you guys pointed in the right direction and we will go from there. All right guys, so the first thing that I'm going to add to my casserole dish here, I think this is a one quart casserole. It might be one and a half quarts. Um, it's, you know, your typical stoneware round. It's about four inches deep. This is what I like to make this in. Number one ingredient, Bruce's yams. I used to make this casserole with sweet potatoes that I would cook myself. And then one year I needed a shortcut um, and I made it with the Bruce's yams and everybody went nutty for it so I've just stuck with it since then. And yes, I'm making this in my casserole dish. I just don't want to dirty up something else. So I'm going to take my Bruce's yams and I'm going to mash them up with my potato masher. You're not looking for like super smooth here. You just want to get them mashed up so that they're not in great big chunks because we're going to be stirring and combining more after this. So that's, that's plenty good, just that right there. To this, I am going to add two thirds of a stick of melted butter. No, one third of a stick of melted butter. The two thirds will be for our crumb topping. So I'm going to pour that in along with two eggs. Keeping the chicken farmers in business today, guys. Hopefully next year it'll be our own chickens and not the chicken farmers. Um, I need a cup of sugar. So that's a cup of white sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt. A half a cup of milk, which I forgot to pour out. My milk container is still slippery from the last recipe. I want to check something real quick. teaspoon of vanilla and I used to use these seasoning packs that I could find when we lived in Mississippi um, that were they weren't Bruce's they were another company but it was a, a sweet potato seasoning pack since I can't find those here I'm going to go with forgetting to bring my teaspoons over. Hold on just a second, guys. So as I was saying, I'm gonna go with kind of making this up myself. We're going to put a quarter teaspoon of allspice in here. And allspice is actually a spice. A lot of people think that it's like where they combine a bunch of spices together. That's not true. It is an actual spice. I'm going to grind in about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm going to put in an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves because I think cloves and sweet potatoes go beautifully together. But cloves can get overbearing very quickly, you know. I'm gonna put in lid down, um, a quarter teaspoon of cardamom. 
ground cardamom. I have fresh cardamom, but I'm feeling too lazy to grind that. It's a little bit harder to grind than the nutmeg is. And then I'm going to do a full teaspoon of cinnamon because we like cinnamon. Note I am not putting ginger in here. To me, ginger is beautiful with pumpkin, but I don't like it with my sweet potatoes. So there's our full teaspoon of cinnamon. And now we are just going to mash and mix. Did I tell you that I buttered this pan already? I can't remember if I told you or not. I had a little bit of a technical difficulty with my phone in the middle of recording. So if I repeat myself, that's why. Let me just grab a spoon. Well, I've got a spoon to make sure this is well combined. The lights are flashing. We're not, that's weird. We're not in the middle of like a, uh, a storm or anything like that. However, we have been having um, some transformers pop lately. So it probably has something to do with the transformers. All right guys, that is well mixed. And now we're gonna make our crumb topping real quick. We'll set him over to the side. And for our crumb topping, I need a bowl. My batteries are starting to lose their charge and I am forgetting things, guys. Um, I'm going to need a cup of brown sugar. Oh, you don't want to come out of there. And that's, you know, a heavily packed cup. I need a half a cup of flour, which, again, this little measuring cup has a line on the inside for a half cup and then to the top is a whole cup. So I'm just gonna scoop it out and get it to the line. That's my half cup of flour. And I think I'm using too small of a bowl. <clears throat> Maybe, no. I definitely need a bigger bowl. Okay. Now we have plenty of space to get things done. So I'm going to just mash these together a little bit. Like I said, in here we have a cup of packed brown sugar. You can use light or dark, whichever you like. And to this, we are going to add a cup-ish of chopped pecans. If you don't like pecans, you don't have to add those, but to me, that's a big part of what makes the recipe. So let me grab my pecans over here. Um, I always have pecans. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Um, I always have pecans in the pantry. I always have walnuts in the pantry. And it's nice times like this because I would have totally forgotten these when I was getting everything together for this recipe. And I'm just gonna, you know, roughly chop these. I wanna make sure I don't have any whole pecans in here, but okay if they're bigger pieces that's not a big deal so 
So guys, tell me below, if you eat pecan pie, do you prefer for the pecans and the pecan pie to be chopped or whole? This is a big debate within my family. Some people they say they like them chopped because it's easier to cut the pie. And some people say that they like them whole because it makes the pie look prettier. So let me know your thoughts on that. All right, we're gonna add this generous cup of chopped pecans to our mixture. I can smell the turkey. The giblets are cooking for the giblet gravy. And we are in the home stretch, guys. All right, now I'm gonna add two thirds of a stick of melted butter. My house is cool enough that the butter kind of wanted to uh, re-solidify. And we are just going to mix this around till it makes our crumb topping. My husband, in particular, loves this recipe. It's the one thing he would be most disappointed if I didn't make it Thanksgiving. So we're just going to keep kind of melting this, melting, mixing this around until everything comes together. You can see it's starting to get like uh, wet sand where it's crumbly and coarse. Can you guys see that? Ooh, that was a big old chunk of butter still there. Okay, so that is kind of what you want it to look like. It's just, you know, your flour and pecans and sugar are all kind of uh, sticking together. If I pick this up, it kind of, again, clumps together, just like you would any other kind of crisp. And there I go, putting my hands in the food again. It's a good thing I use a lot of antibacterial soap, huh? Well, on days like this, at least. When I'm handling poultry that did not come from my property, I am going to be washing my hands often with antibacterial soap. So, here is the casserole that we just mixed up a few minutes ago, or the, the custard, maybe you want to call it. And now, on this smallish casserole, we're going to add all this crumb topping. I am just going to kind of even it out on the top a little bit. And guys, this will go into a 350 oven for 35 to 45 minutes. You'll know it's done when the top is brown um, and it's you can kind of smell the pecans toasting. So guys, I'll bring you back when this is coming out of the oven. So guys, I lost my final clip, but here is a picture of the finished sweet potato casserole. Hope you guys like it. Bye.